Well, I'd like to welcome you back to What's Up with Prophecy today. Today our study will be on the topic, Sin is Like Leprosy. So this is part 3b of the Tabernacle series. Now God's salvation plan, I have broken it up into uh, four different uh, stages, if you will. The first stage I'm calling Before Man Was Created, and we're still into stage one. Second, second stage is I'm calling the teaching plan. And the third stage is calling reviewing the records. And finally, the fourth stage is called the final exam. So right now we're still on stage one, but on our next video, we'll start into stage two. So I hope you come back and stay tuned for that. And if you like these videos, I hope if you're watching on YouTube that you give me a little up arrow and leave a comment that will help in getting this uh, information out to more people. It'll give Google a, a more of a reason to show this to other people when they do a search. So today, like I said, we're going to be looking at stage one. So today's topic is how did sin originate in heaven? How did that occur? So let's recap Chris quickly here our last two videos before we jump into today's topic. So the last video we looked at here was three gods. And in this video, I showed you my reasons for believing that there are literally three separate unique gods in heaven. And there's a lot of Bible texts that cover that. So I just wanted to recap with one simple Bible text there that we all can relate to. This is where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. So in this one Bible text, we're gonna see all three gods here. And it says, Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened to him. So, and Jesus saw that the Holy Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighting upon him, upon Jesus. So Jesus was there in the water, he was being baptized, and he saw the Spirit of God being uh, like a dove lighting upon him. Then he heard something, he, and lo, it says, I heard a voice from heaven, that was his father talking, saying, this Jesus is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's in Matthew 3, 16 to 17. So in this one simple, easy to understand Bible text, you can see that there is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, three separate unique gods. Now, of course, Jesus didn't get baptized, come up out of the water and say to himself, this is the voice from the Father in heaven. I am well pleased with you, Jesus. No, that's, it's, was, it was God in heaven that said that. It wasn't Jesus. So this is really straightforward. It's not so complicated that everybody can't really follow what's going on. So what is the salvation plan? We also covered that. So the salvation plan is this. If sin should appear, then Jesus, the Creator God, would figuratively step in for the sinner and pay the sinner's penalty with his life. So we read in Matthew 7, 27, it says, Unlike those other high priests, he, Jesus, does not need to offer sacrifices every day. So there's no sacrifices going on in heaven. There's no lambs being slaughtered. Jesus is not being put on the cross. But Jesus is at once for all time when he offered himself as the sacrifice for people's sins. So Jesus did this once, he doesn't need to do it again. We read this clearly in Hebrews 7. So all the sacrifices that we're going to be studying about on the uh, tabernacle in the desert and the other Solomon's temple, etc., those sacrifices, in a sense, didn't mean anything because it was only the one sacrifice that Jesus made that meant anything. So today's study is how did sin originate in heaven? The Bible likens sin to a person having leprosy. In Bible times, having leprosy was like the worst sickness that you could get and befall you. You were an outcast and everyone ran away from you in the fear of catching the uncurable disease. But Jesus could cure the uncurable both then, then and now. So how do we know this? Well, in Mark 1, verse 40 and 42, we read, and there came a leopard to him, to Jesus, 
beseeching him and kneeling down before him and saying unto him, If you will, Jesus, you can make me clean. Isn't that something? He had that much faith in Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Well, he was moved with compassion for the man, and he put forth his hand to the man and said unto him this. He says, I will that you be clean. And then what happened? As soon as Jesus had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, from him and he was cleansed. Well, we can also have immediate cleansing from our sins. Here's how. It says so in Romans uh, 10, verse 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God the Father raised him, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is what God is asking, for you to accept the sacrifice that Jesus made on your behalf, that he died for your sins, and if you believe with your heart, that means you're going to follow him and do what he wants you to do in life, do the right things, and put God first, that you will be saved into the kingdom. So the disease of sin first raised its terrible head in heaven. That's where it started from. That's where all this problem came from. So the question is, how did sin occur in heaven? That's a mystery, but the Bible gives us some clues on this. Now, sometime after Lucifer and the other angels were created, sin entered into the hearts of Lucifer. So when the sin entered in Lucifer's heart, his cunning lies eventually persuaded one third of the angels in heaven to follow him. So that's what Lucifer, what was his problem? What was Lucifer's problem in heaven? Why did he get all upset here? Why did sin rise in his heart? Lucifer wanted to be elevated. He didn't like his position in life. He had ambitions for something better. He wanted to be higher than Jesus. That was his creator. That was the God that created him. He wanted to be higher than Jesus. He wanted to be higher than God the Father, and Father, the sovereign ruler of the universe. He also wanted to be higher than the Holy Spirit that was everywhere. So Lucifer didn't want to worship God as his Lord. That was his problem. He didn't want to worship God as his Lord. He wanted to be elevated to be a God. He wanted to be elevated to be a God. So Lucifer's pride in his own beauty, his own wisdom, and high position as a covering cherub in heaven caused him to sin. So the covering cherub was the highest position an angel could take in heaven, and he was that. But that was not good enough for Lucifer. In Isaiah, we learn a little bit more. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. So Lucifer wasn't helping things out in heaven. He was weakening heaven. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend unto the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's where Lucifer was going. He wanted to be above God. So just three, I remind you, the Godhead is the only one that has a throne. None of the angels have a throne. None of the 24 elders have a throne. Only God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit sit on the throne. Continuing here in Isaiah, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Wow. More than anything, Lucifer the devil wants the rights and prerogatives that only belong to God. He had high ambitions for himself, didn't he? We further read in Isaiah, it says, this is the fate of Lucifer. Now this isn't today what's gonna to happen to him. This is what's gonna to happen to him after the white throne judgment, after the thousand years in heaven. But you, son of the dawn, who aspires to raise your throne above the stars of God and make yourself like the most high, are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. That is, he is thrown into the pit, a mass grave, 
with all the rest of God's enemies. So Lucifer knows his fate. That's why he walks around like a, a roaring lion. He wants to get as many people in that mass grave with him as he can, so he'll suffer less. So I believe that God reasoned with Lucifer and the other rebellious angels for a long time, possibly 6,000 years. God could have instantaneously destroyed Lucifer and his angels without even blinking an eye. Because their sins were so cunning and deceitful, God chose another plan. He chose to let Lucifer and his sins run their course so that the whole universe can see the evil results of the track that Lucifer was on and his sin. So this running the course takes time. Actually, it's taking 6,000 years. So Lucifer is running the course with his, his lies and his deceit. So Lucifer's sins were so cleverly hidden that angels in heaven didn't see the consequences of Lucifer's actions. Eventually, one third of the angels sided with Lucifer. Imagine that, a third of the angels in heaven sided with Lucifer. Well, God the Father reasoned with Lucifer and the other angels for a long time and tried to show them the errors of their thinking. Finally had to banish Lucifer and his followers, that's one third of the angels from heaven, to limit the damage they were doing there. So one note on this here, I want you to remember this. This is the first time that Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. There will be a second, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But he was kicked out of heaven before Adam and Eve were created. So here is how God the Father dealt with Lucifer. In the abundance of your trade, you, Lucifer, were filled with violence in your midst. You sinned, and so I, God, that's God the Father, cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God, where I dwell, and I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. That's a reference to God's throne in heaven. So this is yet to happen, where it says, I destroyed you. Lucifer is not destroyed today. He is active and on this earth. Lucifer, your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom and for the sake of your splendor. So, your splendor. So Lucifer sinned because of the position he was in and it went to his head, as we might say in our language today. Continuing. So God the Father, I'm, I'm going to cast you to the ground. I'm going to cast you to the earth, into the abyss. I'm, I expose you before kings to feast their eyes on you. There's nothing that you can hide from me. By the multitude of your iniquities and the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. You profaned heaven. So I brought fire out from your myths. It consumed you. That's a future white throne judgment scene. We're all going to see that, by the way. And I will turn you into ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you. So everyone will see, all the saved, all the saints, will see Lucifer burn up and he will be ashes underneath our feet. That's something to think about, isn't it? Well, on Resurrection Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, who loved Jesus so much, went to the tomb where Jesus was uh, buried, but he wasn't in the tomb and she saw him and she walked up to him and she wanted to do what? She wanted to touch Jesus. But Jesus immediately cautioned her with this quote. He said, uh, touch me not for I am not yet ascended to heaven. Touch me not for I have not ascended to heaven to my father. Now, why did he have to go to his father on Resurrection Sunday? Have you ever thought of that? Well, later on, I'll tell you why in a, in a minute. Later on Sunday, Jesus ascended to heaven and his sacrifice for mankind's sin was accepted by God the Father. That's why he went to heaven. He wanted to, he, he wanted to see what God the Father did, did my sacrifice, did my sinless life and death on the cross, that I pay the penalty 
for mankind's sins. So he went to the Father and the Father accepted his sacrifice. So then Jesus fought with Lucifer and Lucifer and his evil angels were thrown out of heaven into the abyss. The abyss is a spiritual jail, you might say, uh, on earth. Uh, so that's where Lucifer is today. He's not walking around physically right now. He will be in the future, but today he's not. So over here in Revelation 12, we read, and now war rose, arose in heaven and Michael. Now that was Jesus' name in heaven when he led the angels. So he was the leader of the angels in heaven. So Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, that's Lucifer and the devil, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But Lucifer and his angels were defeated. Imagine that, fighting with God and thinking you're gonna win. But they were defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And what happened? The great dragon Lucifer was thrown down. He was cast out of heaven, that ancient serpent who was called the devil, and he was thrown down into the earth, into the abyss, along with his angels were thrown down with him. So poor us, we get stuck with him in a sense, but that's how it is. So he was thrown out of heaven, but he was thrown down, thrown down to earth. Now I'm gonna change gears here a little bit. Let's transition now to the earth where Lucifer was thrown down into the abyss. It says, be sober, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around on earth like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So when he was thrown out of heaven, unfortunately, we ended up with him. It's like a, a, a bad relative coming to stay for the weekend and he's there for six months. Well, we got this guy here until Jesus come back, comes back. We also read in Luke, and Jesus said, I saw Satan, that's Lucifer, fall like lightning from heaven. So this just reinforces, there's many other Bible texts we can get, just reinforces that, that the devil is here on earth and he was kicked out of heaven. So in Genesis 1:26, we read that then God said, let us make hu human beings in our image to be like us. Make us, that's plural, make in our image, that's plural also. So God, the triune God in heaven, they wanted to have a family that looked like them. So Adam and Eve were created by Jesus, sinless without any predisposition to sin. Well, that's a fancy way of saying that they're, they don't, they don't want to sin uh, automatically like we do, it doesn't take much for us to sin, but they didn't have that evil thought in the back of their mind all the time. They had a predisposition to do good, not to sin. So Adam and Eve, God told Adam and Eve something in the Garden of Eden. We all know what he told them, don't we? He said, in that day that you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you shall surely die. So he warned Adam and Eve, don't eat from that tree. And in the very day, not a thousand years later, but in the very day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. Wow. Have you ever thought of that before? So that's what I, I read the Bible like it's like it's written. I don't change it. So in the day you eat from it, you will surely die. So let's take a look at this little picture here. This is a tree of good and evil. Oops representation, Adam and Eve there with the serpent in the front. And God said the penalty for eating of the tree of good and evil was immediate death that very day. So in the same day, they should die, but from the foundations of the world. Now, this is what I want you to keep, you know, reinforcing this, remember this. Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they came up with a plan of salvation from the foundations of the earth. Imagine that. And so Jesus volunteered to pay the price for Adam and Eve's sin back in the Garden of Eden, or they would have died immediately. And he also paid the penalty, paid the price for our sins with his life. So that cross that we are familiar with seeing, the, your sin penalty was paid by Jesus in full.
Well, that's a wonderful thought, and I hope everyone that's watching this video takes advantage of that, because that gets you an eternal life to spend with Jesus and be blessed by his presence. So in Genesis 3, 8 to 10, we read, they heard the voice of the Lord God, Jesus. So they heard Jesus' voice. And he was walking in the desert in the cool of the day. So Adam and his wife ran over, wanted to say, hello, Jesus, how are you? No, they didn't do that. They hid themselves from his presence amongst the trees in the garden, in the garden. Then what happened? And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam, Eve, where are you? He, was, he, he knew where they were, but he wanted to see what they would say. But he heard the voice, uh, they heard the voice of, in the garden of, of uh, Jesus, and they were afraid because they were naked and they hid themselves. Well, why did, why did they hide themselves this day when they were naked? Where before they ate from the tree, they didn't hide themselves from Jesus. Well, probably, this is just my idea, probably there was some sort of a glow about them that didn't show their nakedness, but it, it could have been something else. But in, anyway, their nakedness bothered them. So we read here, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God Jesus, what did he do for them? He made skins of coats of skin and clothed them so they wouldn't be naked. The question is this, where did Jesus get the clo cloths or coats, excuse me, coats of skin to clothe them? Where did he get the coats of skin to clothe them? Well, he must have had to go out and kill innocent lambs, butcher them, take the skin off of them. And that's how he clothed Adam and Eve. Now, I don't know anything about raising sheep or skinning them or any of that stuff. I don't know if it was one sheep or two sheep or two lambs. But so I just put two in here, one for Adam, one for Eve. But that may not be. Maybe, maybe it was just one. So the Lord God Jesus made coats of skin and clothed them. So in Hebrews 9.22 we read, Nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So the shedding of blood in this case were these innocent lamb or lambs to make coats for Adam and Eve, to cover their nakedness that they perceived after they uh, sinned. So how many sacrificial altars were there over the years where animals had to be sacrificed for people's sins? Well, we just looked at one here. That's where Jesus killed a lamb to clothe Adam and Eve's nakedness. So this was the first animal sacrifice that I can find in the Bible that related to sin. The second here is Cain and Abel. Each one of those had a sacrificial altar. Then the next is Noah. As soon as the ark that he was in landed on solid ground, he built a sacrificial altar after the flood. And then Abraham built an altar during his travels. Always where he went, he built sacrificial altars. And God gave Moses detailed instructions on building the, the sanctuary in the desert uh, with its sacrificial altars. And I'm going to get into that in our very next video. Number six, Solomon's temple had a sacrificial altar, and so did the other temples. So all temples had sacrificial altars. We read over here in Hebrews 7:27. Unlike these other high priests, Jesus does not need to offer sacrifices every day. Jesus is not in heaven hanging on a cross sacrificing himself. Jesus is not in heaven with baby lambs, innocent baby lambs, sacrificing them for our sins. It says here, but Jesus did this once for all when he offered himself as a sacrifice for people's sins. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. So God the Father chose Jesus as your ransom before the, be, the, before the world began, long before the world began, it says. 
But now in these last days he has been revealed for our sake, for your sake, for my sake. That's in 1 Peter 1.9. So the idea that Jesus was going to come to the earth, live as a man, live a sinless life, and anyone that believed in his sacrifice and accepted him wholeheartedly can be saved, that whole plan says here, was created long before the world began. So the plan of redemption goes way back there, doesn't it? Amazing. Well, in our next study, stage two, we're gonna get into the tabernacle in the desert. Well, I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this. Uh, if you happen to be watching it on YouTube, Please, uh, if you get a blessing from it, hit the, the up arrow, the like button there. And if you like, if you want to leave a comment, that would be good. All these things YouTube takes into consideration when people start searching for studies on the sanctuary, or on the Bible, on Jesus. My videos might rank a little bit higher, but, it, you know, whatever the Spirit impresses you. So we'll see you next time in our next video. God bless.